Well, good morning. Welcome to another edition of the Bare Bones. So this time around, I decided to try something different um, and step a little bit outside my comfort zone and go on to a bit of Calvary play. Now, usually I'm not very good at Calvary, actually, and that still holds true, apparently. Uh, and I'm I'm not really good with javelins or, or pikes, but I've always liked the idea of, of mounted archers. Like, I, I just, I thought that those were pretty cool. You know, like, fat, like, because if you watch my previous videos, you know that I like fast moving uh flanking units and to me that's what mounted archers are they're fast moving they can flank uh they can do damage and run away right so i thought well it's time to take a look at at uh, the mounted archers and we've really only got three uh i don't count the rattans because they're mounted crossbows and my rattans are level one so <laughs> i just don't have the time to to level those up but uh, again they're not they're not archers, they're crossbows. So what do we have? Well, we've got the Kabutul, we got the Korchins, and we got the Bull Riders. So I decided I was going to take a, a look at these three units. And uh, to do that, I had to, to level the Bull Riders and the Kabutuls because the only ones I ever used were the Korchins. And, and you'll notice that, you know, no one uses any of those units too often. Like, you don't see them too much. I mean, you, you do see the Korchins quite a bit. You do see... A little bit of the bow riders. Uh, you rarely see the kivu tools, and uh, they are probably one of the three most unloved units in the game. And unfortunately, there is a reason for that. But I've got a. I think I've got an idea on how to use one of them pretty good. But we'll we'll get into that later. But for right now, let's let's take a look at your data stamps. Or sorry, your timestamps that we're going to look at. So the first things after the uh, introduction is I'm going to look at the veterancy lines and the doctrines for the three units in question. And uh, then I'm going to take all the numbers from the data cards and I'm going to put them side by side in a, in a, in a, in a spreadsheet so you can see them. And these are all the things that uh, in the veteran lines, the doctrines, everything that will show up in the data card, right? So if there's more damage generally that shows up. What's not in there is things that um, like you know, plus 30% of charge damage. Well, that doesn't show up in the data card, but I'll get into that in the next three slides, which will be the Kiv tool traits and abilities and Korchin traits and abilities and Bull Riders traits and abilities. So those three will, will have everything else that doesn't come on the data card. And then we're gonna get into a bit of gameplay, and then I'm gonna go with my conclusions. And uh, so with that being said, let's get right at it and take a look at the veteran doctrines, the veteran sea lines and doctrines for the Kiv tool. Now, I was initially very excited for the Kivu tools because, you know, it's a charged sword cavalry with 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 an archer ability. Who would want that? And and uh, when it first came out, um, way back in season two, uh, the archer ability, the, the, it, the, you had to activate it, right? Same same with what it is now. But back then, it, it worked more like a uh, uh, like an area attack. You would you would activate it. You'd move it over to where you wanted them to shoot and then they'd shoot right so you really had to stop and 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 uh you know make that happen and so, so of course that would make you at a standstill and you can get creamed what they've done this time around is that they've made that ability so that if you just hit a button and they'll shoot at the closest thing to them uh <clears throat> and it also does things like it, it increases their speed as as they're going uh, so I was excited to give this another try uh, when we do it. So let's take a look at the, the two lines that we can go up, um, the top line and, and the bottom line. And you'll see here that um, the top line is it, uh, and I'll get into this later, but it has mostly um, range benefits, uh, archer benefits. There is uh, uh, charge cooldown benefits as well and a bit of slashing damage. So, But your top line is basically... It kind of adds a couple of extra, uh, you know, ranged stuff into it. Now, your bottom line, on the other hand, it's more of your charge line, right? So it, it, it allows uh, more charge damage. It does have a bit of a cooldown bonus to it, but it is mostly your charge line, right? Uh, so let's take a look at uh, what doctrines I'm going to use. And let me just bring that slide up. Okay, so doctrines. Now, you can see that... Uh, I, they're all blue. There's nothing really spectacular here. Um, there's the Rare Sword Calvary Doctrine, which gives you that extra 20% movement speed. Breakthrough Doctrine, uh, Rare Piercing Damage Doctrine, so again, you get that extra like 95 and 75 damage. Now, the Assassination Doctrine, why is that there? I really had nothing else to put in there, and I thought, well, you know, you can ride up to a, a hero and hit that, that uh, arrow command, 
and it'll they'll just shoot him, right? So I thought, oh, that'll that'll help, right? So and of course the rare piercing defense doctrine again that's on there simply because uh, running around you are outranged by uh, archer units on the ground, so they're going to hit you, and you need to have some kind of defense before you get out of the way, right? So that was my thinking when I put these on there, because uh, the honestly I, I actually saved all my best doctrines for the corchins. So I, you'll notice when I when we go into the corchins that uh, they're pretty pimped out. So let's uh, let's take a look at Corchins now. And uh, so of the three units, um, before I started making these videos, I had probably used the Corchins the most. They had leveled naturally, uh, and I was always kind of disappointed with them. I I, I wanted to use them because I liked the whole idea of of uh, mounted cavalry, so or mounted uh, archers. And so when I was playing uh, field battles and I had an extra 170 points, I didn't know what to do with. Usually I would throw these guys in. Uh, but I, I decided when I was going to do this this uh, this uh, video that I would really try to get them to work. So I I put a lot of uh, epic doctrines on them, right? So they they've got a lot of epic doctrines, and uh, let's take a look at um, the the veterancy line. And there is really only one. You can only use the top line, right? The bottom line it has uh, food consumption and the crap like that in it. So. Uh, there's just no reason to have that anymore, right? There's no reason to have food consumption, uh, you know. So I think they, they should just take that out of the game. But so as it sits, go up the top line. So what about the doctrines? Well, you can see I've got them all epic out. And the first thing is the Epic Mount of Doctrine 3, which is reduces the movement speed by 15% for three seconds. Well, that's strengthened right now. That, that came in a, in a box, but I actually have it, and I think it's 10%. Uh, but when they when I, when this came up, all of a sudden I I, I lost the uh, the previous what it actually was. I think it was ten percent. Resist arrow doctrine. Why is that on there? Because uh, I I got it again from the uh, ancient treaties, and it reduces damage taken from arrows by a hundred and increases damage dealt to range units by a hundred. It's not um, as good I think as a breakthrough doctrine because even though breakthrough doctrine is ninety five. To, as opposed to 100, uh, it's against all units as opposed to just archers, right? But I did like the resist the resistance in that, so I thought I'll throw that in there. Gave it the epic mobility doctrine, unlock sprint. They don't have it naturally like the bow riders do, so I thought, well, I might need that to get away from uh, charge units that are trying to get at me, so I threw that on there. Epic mounted archery doctrine one, increases shooting accuracy by 50%. I Took that out of the box. I decided to use that one because, uh, uh, like, like you know, at the end of the season when you get the, the your ar uh, archery doctrine pick box, I took it out of there because I wanted to do this video and I thought that would be the best thing I could do, right? And we'll see, maybe it'll make the corchins really viable, right? And then of course the open ground doctrine, which is increases damage inflicted in field battles by 100. And again, I thought that would help. So those are the doctrines I used for um, the Corchins, and we'll, we'll see if that actually worked for me or not, but we'll get into that later. So let's take a look at, at Bow Riders. Now, Bow Riders, um, they became kind of like the hidden, like the hidden talent that you never knew you needed, right? Like uh, of the three, I think the Bow Riders surprised me the most. And uh, I had never even thought of using them. Now, I know that they were recently uh, updated, uh, like a few months ago, I guess. And I heard they were updated. I never even really looked at them until I thought about doing this video. Because I thought, well, they're updated, but Corchins are still blue. I'll use the Corchins. So let's uh, let's take a look at the, the, the two lines of the bull riders. Now, um, let's take a look at the top line first. And let me just bring up that slide. The, the two lines are, are a little interesting. Um, the top line, it gives you more range and it gives you a little bit more damage uh, and it gives you the area attack uh, ability. So you could say that, that the the top line is, is a little bit more damage, right? Now, the bottom line, it's, it's almost like it's more survivability, right? Because... As you go down the bottom line, uh, you get uh, this ability called keep your distance. So while moving at high speed, the unit will try to keep its distance from the enemy. I thought, well, that's pretty interesting. But the problem with this line is that 
live off the land. Again, you get this food consumption thing. So I thought what I what I really need to do is like not use that food consumption thing, but what else could you get from it because i mean if i went all the way up the line i would i would uh, at the very end you get um plus five percent in field battles but you're losing that food consumption so what else do i get well just past keep your distance is move as one another five percent speed well that's useful as again it's survival right and then you get two more soldiers to the unit so i decided i would go that far down just so i could get the keep your distance and the extra five percent movement speed because I wanted to try that out. I want to see like, well, that's kind of good, right? Like, I mean, you're you're in, you're in a fight. Someone's trying to kill you. Your units will will move away, right? Uh, but there's a caveat there. While moving at high speed, what's high speed? Is high speed full gallop? Is high speed just moving at all? So you don't know. So I decided anyway. I would try this hybrid build, and of course, the the, the three from the top line I took is sharp shot increases firing accuracy while moving slowly by fifty percent. And increases rate of fire moving fast by 20%. That's the next one. And then the last one is each level increases critical value by 4%. Now I'm going to have those in another slide, but I just wanted to point out like this is why I went in that hybrid line, right? I, I don't want the food consumption. It's it's a waste of a point. Is there any other way I can make that keep your distance work for me? And I'm going to try it like this. So doctrines, what doctrines am I looking at? So by the time I got to doctrine out know, the, the bow riders i was down to the ghetto doc doctrines but i mean i did get the uh, uh, another rare mounted archer doctrine which is the extra ammo uh, i do have a couple of these so i could have stuck it on the the, the corchins but i decided not to uh and i gave them a piercing damage a little extra life armor penetration and a bit breakthrough doctrine so they got the breakthrough doctrine instead of the corchins uh but again nothing to scream at but these are the doctrines i'm going to use uh and so now let's um Let's uh, let's wrap all this up into the data slides, right? Like I want to show you what all of this stuff combined looks like. So the first thing to notice is that I put fire archers and nam cans at the very bottom. This is just for comparative purposes for damage. Now the thing about the fire archers and the nam cans is that I could get a, a unit DPS calculation out of them, which I couldn't do with the mounted archers because uh other than the bow riders uh they don't have a an area attack command where i could uh burn all the ammo off and, and then calculate damage right now the bow riders one line does have that the top line has that uh but it's not standard right and so because i couldn't do it for the rest i didn't do it for the bow riders either but one thing to, to you can be sure is that it's less. And it's less because if you look, NAMCANs have 32 under strength, 32 men in the unit. Fargers got 28 and bow riders get 20 and 22 and 18 up until you can get that, that 20. Uh, but they do have a lot more health, right? And I think that's obviously they're, they're calculating the horse into that as well. So they do have a lot more health. But if you slide all the way down to the defenses, piercing defense, slash defense, uh, blunt defense, the PDEF, right? Th those things down there, you'll notice that it's bad, right? Bull riders, 113 piercing defense. And we consider the fact that if they stray within range of a, of one of these NAMCAN units or a fire trainer or an archer trainer of any kind, they're going to get hit hard. And so that's probably why you, you that extra health is there. You know, it's the horse health. It can help you get out of the way. And, and like, uh, and look at the ranges, the variable ranges, right? Let's slide back to the other end. You look at ranges, RNG, you know, the, the top Kavuta line has a, has a 52 range, right? And the bottom line is 45, right? And if you're looking down at the, my archers and my NAMCANs have 89 and 94. That's because they each have a five meter range doctrine, right? But still you're out range two to one, right? You're well within range before they, they, uh, before, uh, you are right. So. The only one that come close is the top line of the bull riders, which gets 65. So let's take a look at how like damage and things like that is gonna it's gonna sort itself out. So the thing to notice uh, here in the piercing armor penetration line, uh, they're all roughly the same. For some reason, the cover tools are 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 the lowest, uh, but they're all roughly the same, right? Um, bull riders top line is 1300 bottom line 1151 so there's like a 
well, maybe that's that's you know that's the the, the largest margin, right? But the top line of bull riders is thirteen hundred, and the, the fire archers and navigants are also in the thirteen hundred. So so looking at it like that, archer wise, shooting wise, your piercing armor penetration is kind of the same, right? It's kind of the same. The big difference though comes in the defensive piercing uh, piercing armor, right? So P death, if you look, the bow riders are 113, the quartzons are 171. So the Namcans and the fire archers have three times the the piercing defenses, the bow riders, and twice as much as the quartzons. Now they're on par roughly with the bottom line of the Kabutuls and a little bit better than the top line. But like I was talking about that range issue, Right, you know, you got to ride like forty meters into the the fire archers and namcans range just to start shooting, and and now this is where it really becomes uh, an issue is is because the piercing armor penetration is roughly on par and the damage is again roughly roughly on par. Fire archers do the most with eighteen fifty three, uh, and corchins and bull riders, which is really odd, like fourteen eighty eight and fifteen thirty, but that's those are the numbers, uh, you know. When you when you add in the piercing uh, penetration and piercing defense, you're, you know you're going to realize that you're going to do more damage as a fire archer and an amcan because your your piercing defense is better, the the riders are less, so and you have more bots in the unit, so that means that you're going to lose that fight. You ride into you ride into range of an archer unit before your guys can even shoot, you're going to lose that fight. You know, uh, even if he's he's uh, got someone else closer than than you are, let's say he's got a, a guy right tight, he can still because he has that area attack, he can turn around and force his archers to shoot at you, right? Now you have a lot of health there, uh, but again, he's got as an amcan thirty two guys in the unit, and their their damage is is um, you know only thirteen thirty six. But don't forget they've got that bleed effect, right? So that bleed effect is there as well. So. I initially thought when I when I first when I first was gonna would do that I'll ride around and kill archers right well that's that's not an option the archers will always win the fight that's one thing I've noticed is that you're not gonna they'll kill you so quickly you won't even know you won't even realize it right you can get at them with the, the Kivutul sabers but again you know a, a good archer player half a schmick is already trying to defend himself against against uh, charge cavalry like you know putting himself in positions where like next to a fence or something, right? So you're not going to do that with with uh, bow riders. Now, what you can hunt, it turns out, is is pikes, uh, halberds, anything without a shield, right? Uh, you can still go after shielded infantry, but I found uh, a couple times I was trying to ride around to the back of it and shoot into the where they weren't, but then they just shiltron up, right? And you're not going to do a lot of damage arcing it in. So it becomes really really difficult to, to, to use them like that. So that's what I wanted to point out with these data sets is that, um, you know, the, the ability to ride around and shoot archers is limited. So let's look at uh, their abilities now. Let's look at the Kabutuls first. We'll start with them and then we'll move on after that. So Kabutul riders, you'll notice that the top veterancy line, you get an extra melee rate of attack, firing actually plus 20%, and rate of attack, I presume this is range, plus 12%. And a charge cooldown of 11 seconds. So you get 11 seconds off the charge, and damage to infantry goes up by 10%. Now, again, these are all percentages that we have no idea what the base is, right? Like, um, well, damage to infantry, you kind of know what the base is because that's what your your base damage is, and you'll get 10% on top of that. But your rate of attack, they never ever come out and tell you how how fast the sword swings, right? How fast you shoot. You have to figure that out, uh, you know, by by shooting all the rounds off, and you just can't do that with this unit. So then the bottom veterans line reduces range damage by ten percent, so that's uh, you're getting hit. Reduces the charge CD by seven seconds, so you got a a, a lower like your your charge cooldown on the other line is actually better, uh, but your charge damage here is better, so you get a thirty percent bonus to your charge damage. So that's that's pretty decent. So this is this is what comes in the veteran seal line that is not um, calculated into the data card. Uh, you can't calculate the data card itself won't calculate damage to infantry in the data card because you know it's it's a it's a very specific uh, damage set right so it's not actually the data card so you just think okay I'm going to hit infantry I'm going to get an extra ten percent that's pretty much it 
Uh, so what about the traits? Unit traits are those things that are listed just above the, the data set, right? So you, you look at, can we look at both blades? And it says it's equally efficient at ranged and melee. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna call liar on that one. It's complete bullshit. Uh, formations it gets wedged and dispersed. Uh, not bad. I, I, I like the fact that it gets other than a dispersed formation. Unit ardors charge. I, that's pretty self-explanatory. Look a swarm. Now this is what they replaced that kind of area attack it had when it first came out. So this is a large number of arrows are fired in a short time and the movement speed of unit is increased for eight seconds. So essentially you're riding around and if a player comes within range, you can just tap that button and they'll all shoot at them and they'll get a slight boost to their speed. And it is slight. It's it's not something that you, you know, you, you think, oh, all right, a speed boost, you know, uh, it's not that, it's not that good. So, but it does give you that auto fire option, like you're, you're riding, you shoot, you hit the button, you're shooting at, at, at the target automatically, right? It's got a, it's got a bit of a cooldown to it. Not, not too bad. It's like, it's really quick, uh, but there is a cooldown to it. You only get to use it every so often. So, uh, it turns out that, uh, and I'm going to have to say this right now, the Kev tools suck. <laughs> you know, they're just bad. I've tried to use them. Uh, I've tried to use them top line and bottom line. Uh, and I just could not get them to work. I mean, if you're out there and you use these, uh, I think I saw in all the battles I was doing one other person use it one time. So if this is your unit of choice, by all means, please throw it in the comments. What am I doing wrong? Because I don't even want to show you the video. I am so bad with this unit that 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 uh, it's a it's an embarrassment. Anyway, so I want I want to get that up there right now. So moving on, let's uh, let's take a look at the corchins. So I only did the top line with the corchins, and there's only two things that don't show up in the data card, and that's an increase of firing accuracy plus thirty percent, and an increase of critical value plus eight percent. Now, when you add in the doctrine I've got, that's an extra that's that's an extra fifty percent a total of 80% firing accuracy. And you're thinking, like I was, I was looking forward to like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to hit some stuff with, with this unit, right? Cause I've got all that extra accuracy up the top line and plus the doctrine. One of the big uh, takeaways though, or takeaways or one of the big detractors, I guess is the word I'm looking for is the formations. It's only got one is dispersed only very, this unit is very difficult to maneuver because of that dispersed formation. Uh, it's, 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 it's hard to get them around. So now the unit traits and abilities, if you slide over to the other side of the slide, uh, bodkin arrows, piercing armor penetration is greatly increased by what number? No idea, but it is. Rate of fire is reduced by 25%. Well, at least you know that and damage reduced by 10%. So I'm going to go on a limb here and, and say that this is what you want to do when you're shooting at heavy armor units like sword infantry and the crap like that. And when you're shooting at archers, should you actually get a chance to do so without dying, you would flip back to the other side, right? So you're going to get a lower rate of fire and lower damage already just to be able to pin, right? Hunt. This is actually kind of fun. It says this focuses on a single target circling and shooting it. It's probably the unit's, I'm, I'm not going to say only redeeming feature, but it's the only fun feature. Like, like I said, uh, these units are very hard to use and they're much unloved in the community, I would think. But that hunt is actually kind of fun. Uh, now the swift doctrine, uh, I added that in there because it didn't have one. Unlike the bow riders, the bow riders get, get a, a little bit of a movement, uh, boost, uh, but the corchins don't have that. So I stuck a, a doctor on there just to help me move around a bit, but, uh, they do get that, that hunt, which is fun. And I got a, I got a nice little video of how I use it. <laughs> so anyway, moving on to the, uh, iron cap bow, bow riders, uh, looking at the uh, top line veteran suit tree, well, they get a lot of extra stuff in there that isn't on the data unit card. So they get increased firing accuracy while moving slowly. All right, I'm not sure how that, that means, but if you're moving very slowly, you're getting 50%. Rate of fire increase while moving fast. So I guess if they're booking it, they're going to get uh, an even quicker, like 20% there. An additional 10% damage in field battles, and an additional critical value by 8%. And they get that area attack order. Now their movement speed is 7.5. Uh, so this is compared to the Kavutuls. I don't think I put it in there, but they get like a 12. Uh, so 7.5 ain't bad. It's like two and a half, like a, like a, a good sword unit gets like five something. So they get 7.5. So it comes with, uh, oh, I'll show you in the abilities. It, it comes with a, a little 
speed boost ability. But anyway, Bull Rider's alternate build, partway up both lines. So again, you get what uh, increased firing accuracy will move slowly. Uh, you get the same uh, rate of fire increase, moving faster 100%, and that increased critical value by 8%, damage dealt in field battles by 10%. So you get that, that top line stuff, uh, you know, but then of course you get the while moving at high speed, unit will try to keep its distance from the enemy and it gets a 5% speed boost. So it goes up to 7.9 as opposed to 7.5. So uh, these are these are uh, abilities that you get that are not in the data card. So looking at their unit traits, so the unit traits, uh, light attack, this unit relies heavily on its maneuverability to harass enemies. And that's really, after I played a lot, of, a lot of these units for quite a while, that's really all you're doing is you're just harassing people. You're kind of pissing them off. You're not, you're not really doing much, you know. Uh, and it's probably why they're not used very much. Now, in a in a in like a, in history and in, in actual battles, these are important units because they they keep, you know, uh, enemy soldiers on their toes. But in a game where it's a field battle and you're trying to capture points. So what if you're harassing some unit behind the lines? He doesn't care. He's going to soak up your damage, move forward, sit on the point, and what can you do with it? You you can't you can't hit him with it, or you can't you can't you can't take the unit you can't take this unit and take a point away from somebody. And you can't do it, right? So it uh, it says uh, swift. This unit is able to move quickly. We kind of knew that, but not as quickly as as uh, Kabutools, and not as quick and not quick enough as it turns out. Be devil. This is interesting. When attacking, reduces enemies' piercing defense by 50 for 5 seconds. Can stack up to 5 times. Upon reaching 5 stacks, it causes the enemy to lose health over 2 seconds and inflicts dazed. So, I tried to, to use that. You can't really tell if it's working or not. Believe it or not, you can't. So, anyway, but it is interesting. So, I'll try and use that. Formations. Dispersed, horns, and wedge. I love the formations uh choices that you get i tend to i find myself using all three hurdle increase movement speed by 50 percent for five seconds so that's a nice little ability that they added in later i think i'm not i'm not really sure but but it's it's um it's what i tried to to give to the corchins with that that swift doctrine is to give them that extra little bit of movement speed the, the swift doctrine is only 15 percent in the last eight seconds this is 50 percent in the last five seconds I never put it on here to see if I can I can use them one after the other. They most likely don't stack, but you know, I, I didn't do that. But I, I'm kind of interested in trying. Combo shots increase bull riders' firing speed for eight seconds. Now I'm wondering if I took that combo shots and I rode up to a guy and I'm able to get eight seconds worth of those combo shots. If Bedevil comes up at that point, right? Like, is that the best way to get Bedevil? Do you, and do you have to hit the same bot five times, or is it just five hits? I, I don't know, but that's what I was trying to do. You'll see me right up to guys and go, okay, freaking combo shots, let's let's get that rolling, right? Uh, but we're going to find out. And of course, it gets uh, in the top line, the area attack order top line, right? So that's that's in the top line, and that, that is also useful. Uh, but so these are all the, um, the skills, traits, and abilities of, of the three units. And uh, so I'm going to just keep get a bit of a ramble on, on what I found. And, and essentially, uh, I could make a unit last the whole round, but I wasn't doing anything, <laughs> you know, like the, if the team won, it didn't win because of me, right? Like I could take the corchins and I could ride them around and I could shoot at targets and, and you had to be really careful because one good, like uh, sword cavalry unit could charge into you and kill you. Right. So I could take these units and I can get out there and I could, I could, uh, I could get kills with them, but not very many, like 30, maybe 30 kills. And, and, and 30 kills with a normal unit is fine, but you know, you, you, you know, it's not fantastic, but I mean, you would use the one unit, get 30 kills, pull another unit, right? This unit, it, it, you know, it took me the whole match to get those, to get 30 kills sometimes, right? And not because, uh, well, maybe because of the lack of skill, but most likely because, you know, you have to ride around. Oh, there's a, there's a charge unit there. There's a cab unit. He's going to chase me down. So I got to pull that back. So the opportunities, you have to continue to look around for opportunities to, to, sh to shoot. Right. And if there's any kind of cavalry in the area, that's, that's a uh, light sword cavalry, they're going to chase you off. And that's really what it amounts to is that these units are probably 
unused, not because they can't, um, you know, put out some damage, but because everything chases you off, right? Like a charge unit, all he has to do is if, if he catches you in a turn, well, your, your, your bots are sitting there stopped for that second. And then he just rolls right in and wrecks you. Right. So I think that's why these units aren't used very well. So the next question, if these units suck, which unfortunately they do in a great deal of uh, ways, is there any fun to be had in them at all? And the answer is yes. You can. There is some fun to be had in them. The problem is, is that you're not helping your team. Like if you're in a match, uh, if you're off riding around shooting bows and harassing guys, uh, you're probably not helping your team win the match. So is there fun? Yes. Is it a viable unit to take points and win matches? No, no, they're not. And I'm going to show you some little bit of gameplay to, 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 to prove my point. Uh, and then I'll, that'll wrap up this episode of Bare Bones. So anyway, let's take a look at some gameplay. Now I'm going to start with the Kivutals, and I, I, I don't know how many times I can stress this enough. Uh, this, this, vi these videos are not how to play them. Right? Like I'm not trying to show this is the best way to play the, the, the mounted arches because I don't really know. Uh, to me, this was like a more of a review uh, sort of thing, you know, uh, look at the data, look at the numbers, see what you can see. But so instead what the gameplay play footage is going to be, unlike my sword videos, my sword and board uh, infantry videos, where I feel I do know how to play them well enough to give advice on how to play them. These are more going to be like, okay, I was playing it and I noticed this, right? So, so we're going to start with the Cavoodle and there's a couple things I, I want to point out um, as we go through and then I'll do the, the, the next couple of units. Now, obviously, if you are, if this is your unit of choice and you know uh, the best way to play it, please throw it in the comments and uh, help guys out. And, and it actually helped me out too, because I, I like the idea of mounted archers, but as a primary inf infantry player, I'm just not really very good with cavalry. So let's, let's give this a, a shot. So let's, let's bring up the first video. These guys are built as equally good with bows and blades. So this is the top line. So it's the more neutral line. And I get a charge into the back end of a cavalry. They're not even charging me. And that looks like Amagar Lancers, but they, get, they cut me to pieces, right? Uh, so they're not equally good at bows and blades. And this definitely shows, and I notice I ran into an infantry unit up there as well, but you, you'll notice that they're, the idea that they're, they just can't handle a heavy armor unit. Now, you'll notice I'm shooting at this guy and I'm missing. All right, this is the top line. It's supposedly the range line. Now, I start hitting him only when he's running away and there's no transversal, right? So they don't, unless they're, unless they're not moving and something's heading directly away or toward them, they're not doing much. And here... Uh, I can't attack this unit because it's it's uh, you know pretty dug in. So I said, okay, I'll just shoot the bows at them. But what they don't have, what they lack, is is um, you know the, um, the ability to keep shooting. Right? It's a little ability. If they shoot, they're done. Right? So uh, you can't stay there. You know. Now this is uh, is the bottom line. And again, I'm, is it? It's supposed to be equally good. So I, I run up here uh, to, to these guys. And again, that's like a, a, a heavy infantry unit, so I can't charge into them, especially because they're uh, freaking my dows. So I shoot. And they're only hitting, I think, because there's a massive amount of them. I get a kill. You know. And then, uh, so, again, I come up here to, the, to this point, and there's a pike unit sitting there. And I don't want to charge a pike unit, especially if he braces. He foolishly unbraced. I don't know why he did that. And then so I just start shooting at him. But even to a Fort of our Accio pike, you know, you notice I'm not really doing a lot of damage. And, you know, and this is the melee line now. But I think we're going to see what it's supposed to be for. Now I'm going to charge in here. He's not braced. I, I, again, I don't know what the hell he was thinking. He's not braced. Uh... And I go right through him, kill the player. And what's going to happen is uh, we're going to chop this guy up, and then we're going to, uh, you know, chop up some more guys. Like my 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 horses just go out rogue, right? They start killing things everywhere. But when I call them back in, they're they're quite quick, and I go and I kill a a, a, a Shenji Grenadier unit, and uh, I catch this guy on the move, 
and I don't have a charge anymore, but even just standing on the unit and telling them to attack, they cut it up. So they're probably more for, I would think, catching catching uh, light units Loose. behind the lines that aren't quite set yet and uh, taking them apart. Now, I think the bow is just is probably just a gimmick, you know, like it, it, it doesn't seem to be working well, you know. Now, Corchins, on the other hand, like these Corchins, uh, I, you know, you sort of play them like, like all the art, uh, cavalry archers, I think, is you're going to kite, right? You're going to ride around, you're going to kite, you're going to, you know, do drive-bys, essentially. And so uh, these guys do have one redeeming feature, which I found that when I was playing the bull riders, uh, I really wanted. <laughs> so let's just take a quick look at that. So I'm just really, I'm going to come out of here and I'm going to do a couple of drive-bys. And uh, then what's going to happen is uh, uh, a player is going to try and chop up the unit from behind. And uh, it's very, very um, easy for them to do that to the bull riders, I found. And you're going to see a video of me just getting absolutely wrecked. Uh, but... It's not so easy to do it to the Corchins. So the Corchins, they unfortunately don't have the versatility of the bull riders in the sense that they don't have the, the, the formations, right? Like, I really like the formations. I like the bull riders can go, like, fast shooting. Uh, but the, but uh, this formation is only open, right? Now, they do have the, the high pen arrows, which you can see does actually quite well uh, do a damage here. But this guy doesn't like that, so he's going to chase me down. And unlike what you're going to see with the bow riders, when he catches me, he's going to regret it, right? Whereas when they, when I get caught uh, with the bow riders, I'm almost dead. They're like, oh, what do we do? What do we do? Right? So, but this guy's going to come after me, and he's bringing a shield. Me. So, I've done this a few times already, so I know what I'm supposed to do. So I grab him, I drop hunt on top of me, and uh, I'm just, you know, the unit just kills him, right? Because one of the one of the things that uh, players tend to do is they'll go right up behind your cavalry. Uh, this is why one of the reasons I don't like playing cavalry. So right up behind your cavalry, and they'll just kill all your cavalry off as you're riding away, right? And the cavalry is too stupid to turn around and, and, and defend itself. So, or the AI is, anyways. <clears throat> but you can see, like, wow, the corpse has just, you know, had a field day with this hero and the uh, the shield maidens. And now, I do it again to this this uh, this short sword guy. He decides he's going to come out, grab me. And uh, the Corchins just ride around him and shoot him to death. Now, I, would I be able to get away with this if he had a unit with him? No, probably not. He'd have... They'd probably, you know, they'd probably be able to to take the Corchins down. But, I mean, I do get away with it quite a bit when players want to ramble me, right? And they're soloing after me, then I get away with it. If someone's, like, charging after me with his, his cavalry unit and he's, you know... Uh, trying to chase me down and and there's this or there's a, like a big melee ball there and there's like too many bots around for the Corchins to circle properly then then it doesn't really work that well but when when it's uh when it's just some guy trying to ramble me catch me and ramble me like i i kill him every time because he's they're usually surprised that they're going to get shot down like that um I'm, I'm sure you might have happened this happened this happened to you but but that's that's what i thought was really fun the one fun really fun thing about the Corchins is that that even though their range is not that great, uh, they can pen high value units and they can take down players because as a longsword, I have a hard time doing that. Now, as for the bull riders, I know they've been reworked since their initial uh, launch, but I've never played them before. So I don't know the differences between them. Uh, I only know what they are like now. And so, or rather, I, I guess that's a little too heavy of a statement to say. I only know what I have found playing them the last couple of weeks. It's actually very difficult to play uh, field battles for me because where I am on the planet, uh, I can only get a field battle on like a Saturday, Sunday morning. And that's usually when I, I am doing these videos. So it is difficult for me to play uh, Calvary because I prefer to play them in field battles. I don't, I don't take them into uh, uh, Siege. I, that's where I like my infantry. So, uh, so what, one thing I found about these these guys is that um, they're they're almost as good as the Corchins in their penetration and damage when they're not using, you know, like when the Corchins aren't using the the the, the high pen arrows, right, the Bodkin arrows. So 
for a green unit that you know it's only 60 70 points less they seem to have more capability because they have uh, better formations they have um, you know the the ability to shoot arrows faster and they have that uh, bedevil ability so this is all new stuff that was reworked that the corchins which have never been reworked don't have right so I found I actually enjoyed playing these guys more so let's but like I said the one thing they're lacking is that hunt ability which is just amazing so anyway let's let's take a look at the video okay, so this is the top line this is the line that has um, the area attack they're a little slower than the bottom line like a 7.5 bottom line 7.9 for speed rating uh, and uh, they don't have that ability to, you know, dodge, right? So, but they are uh, higher pen, which will translate to higher damage, right? And they've uh, they've got those good formations. So what what I'm doing here is I'm trying to use that extra range, right? So I'm riding up and I'm shooting at what I can shoot at. That's obviously a. Uh, that, that Calvin is obviously a higher armory than us. I'm not very cutting very well. But I'm gonna try I'm trying to shoot at the I'm trying to get close to the, the units on the point, right? Just to see if I can pepper them. Units! Assemble! Get into position! Enemy has captured point And you are doing damage. I remember this is a green unit, right? It's a green unit and it's it's actually getting kills on this this uh you know, this, this bike unit is sitting there. But they can't dodge right <laughs> This, uh, this sorgio, this, uh, sorgio went through me like, like white on rice. But, one of the things you, you are going to see is that on the move, uh, I'm pretty accurate. Right, I'm going to come over here, I'm going to shoot at these guys for a bit. And then I'm gonna chase this cavalry guy down. Now watch, I can actually hit him on the move. I'm actually getting killed on him now, now that I'm running him down. Units, assemble. Get into position. Form up. And I'm a green unit doing this. Form up. Right. That's what I found pretty interesting. Units, now he's got two of us on him. Form up. Get into position. So his charge, I, 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 it was very difficult for me to dodge his charge because I had to recognize that the charge was coming uh, and try and move the unit beforehand, and I couldn't do it. I probably should have hit Hurdle while I was doing that, but again, it was so fast, I, I, I didn't get it done. But I was able to to uh, show that it's got a decent range, it's got good pen, uh, so which translates to damage. Get into position. But not so good at the dodge. But uh, like I said, I was able to to, to chase him down and, and, and kill some of his units. So that's again what the takeaway is that this is a green unit doing this. All right, this is a green archer unit with high mobility. And not bad accuracy considering like I didn't really pimp them out with uh, with decent uh, dockers. Right? And I also like like these formations do allow me to, to move around a whole lot easier. Now I realize the gameplay here isn't stellar, but that's not really why I'm showing this. I, I don't have any stellar gameplay to show you actually. <laughs> so so I guess that's uh, if I did I'd show it, you know, but I don't. But again I'm trying to I'm trying to play it how I think it's supposed to be played, which is you're riding around the outskirts, you're harassing, you're you're throwing arrows in, right? Uh, but like I said in my original preamble, I'm, the team, if it's winning, it isn't because of me, right? You know what I mean? Open fire. But I am doing damage. Yes, Not as much as like a gold unit ripped through there, but I mean, again, this Take is a green unit, right? We captured the point. Units. So this Assemble. is the uh, bottom the line. Get into position. So these guys have uh, way less range, uh, less penetration. There's like 1100, whereas the uh, top line is in the 1300s. Uh, so this is that hybrid line, but they do have that dodge, right? But they don't have uh, the area attack. So they got combo shots, fertiles, and. Uh, 
they have that dodge. Their pen is less, range is less, but they're faster. And these, you know, uh, trying to chase me down, and, and there's this, or there's a, like a big melee ball there, and there's like too many bots around for the portions to circle properly. Then, then it doesn't really work that well. But when when it's uh, when it's just some guy trying to ramble me and catch me and ramble me, like I I kill him every time because they're usually surprised that they're going to get shot down like that. Um, I'm sure you might have happened this happened, this happened to you. But, but that's that's what I thought was really fun. One fun, really fun thing about the Portions is that, that even though their range is not that great, uh, they can spend high value units and they can take down flares because as a long sword, I have a hard time doing that. So what I really wanted to do was figure out how that dodge worked. And uh, the I'm beginning to wonder if you need to be using Hurdle for it to work because what's, what's going to happen is I'm going to get uh, uh, kind of like ambushed by a dual wheel type, and they don't seem to want to avoid him, right? He just runs up behind me and starts, you know, killing bots. Uh, so, so this point here is where I kind of wound up dithering, uh, and I realized the value of continuous movement after this. Uh, after this, I started trying to do more circular movements, but instead what happens is this, this uh, dual wielder comes up, and uh, gets in on me, and I really can't do anything about him. I try to, to maneuver away from him. But you notice he's just going up behind me and, and instant, instant executing uh, guys. So I try to get my bots out of there and take him down, but without the bots to help me kill him, these two guys come in, and, and uh, I try to bring them back to shoot now that they're concentrating on me, but fade to black, right? Well, I'm not even going to show you the rest of it. <laughs> but overall, I, I did like this unit. Um, I didn't see where the bedevils seemed to work. Uh, there's no, doesn't seem to be any real um, animated thing that shows it working. Uh, as I, as I played it, I, I think I've, I've, I've played it enough to, to know that I would like playing it, if that makes any sense, that, that I want to try playing it more in the future. Uh, and I think that, that I could get good with it. But the problem is, as I stated before, is that uh, this isn't a I'm going to win the match unit, right? It's not like a like a, a medal unit or a, a Iron Reaper unit or any of those really good gold tier units come into a point. You know, they're not they're not coming in there to dick around. They're coming in there to to cause a ruckus, right? They're coming in there to to, to seize that objective, right? And and uh, you know you've got to fight when those units appear. And you also know that when you take one out, you know, you you know, if you throw away your purple unit killing a gold unit, you know you've done a good thing, right? So these units aren't on that same level, right? This unit is, is, is uh, I'm going to have fun riding around like an idiot unit, right? Or more appropriately, maybe you have, you have 100 points sitting around, and this would be a fun unit to uh, play with that 100 points. So that's... Uh, my take on mounted archers. Uh, overall, I think um, there is fun to be had, but uh, if you're looking to win a match, these probably aren't your go-to units. Uh, but like I said, there is fun to be had, especially with the hunt. And I think overall, uh, even the bow riders, um, all their different abilities, their the different formations, there 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 is room to 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 get some skill using them, right? Uh, and I'm going to try. Actually, I'm going to. I'm going to re-outfit all the doctrines on there, and I'm going to give it a good try. But uh, that being said, thank you for watching this edition of The Bare Bones. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers.